Okay, give me just a couple moments. Popping out chat. And now... Good evening, everyone. And welcome to another sculpting night. Now, tonight I'm supposed to be doing a... What are you doing, Fuzzball? Yeah, what kind of show of mine would it be if one of these guys didn't ambush me while I'm trying to do the show? Raise it! Alright, if you're watching, go ahead and well, feel free to speak in there. Uh, I'm waiting on the patron for tonight's show. Because I don't remember who it was. I remember there was one scheduled for tonight, but I don't remember who. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes, it's going to be mostly just me doing some general jibber-jabber. And if you're watching this after the fact, later on, uh, don't forget the usual YouTube nonsense of, you know, like, subscribe, bell icon, the usual. You know, that stuff. And any cubic photon miniatures. Speaking of, I uh, finished the uh, Fire Warlock. Or no, the Water Warlock from Thursday. And it's currently printing. And it'll be done about the same time this show is. So, yeah. And, uh... Yes, I'm eating string cheese totally wrong. Anyway. Did I not just put you down on the floor... Somebody is a camera hog. See what I mean? Anyway, many of you will know that, yes, anyway, many of you will know that I've been working on a project based around ancient Mesopotamia. It's not going well. My, my strength seems to be in critters, not in architecture. So I don't think I'm going to... Do you mind? Can I put you down before you put holes in this shirt? Here. Yeah! What are you doing? Anyway... So, I'm putting that on hold. I need to get something out, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Anyway, I'm putting you back on the floor, Fuzzball. Okay. Yes. No, no, no. Down you go. And you shoot. Anyway. Uh, I see that there's two people watching. There's someone who's watching who's not talking. And this show is not fun if it's just me rambling on into the ether with no interaction. Especially when I'm waiting on a patron. So if you're here, please feel free to, you know, come in and chat. Say something. It occurs to me I also forgot to do something. You see... Recently, I had a wee bit of an issue. Hmm. No, it's 75 degrees. No, 65 degrees, rather. Anyway, recently I had a bit of an issue. And <clears throat> at the end of a really bad day, my monitor died. So I'm now in a brand new monitor with... Uh, 75% greater screen space because it went from 1980 by 10 1920 by 1080 to 2540 by 2560 by 1440 so a lot more I mean let me show you what happens when I go to ZBrush now yeah 
Look at all this space. All this empty space. Whoa. Anyway. So. If I don't get my patron today. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making additional belt items and decorations and things like that to add in that I can add on with the button clip in ZBrush to any miniature I make. No. Get down. Oh! Fuzz butt! Get down! Don't use me as crazy cat. Anyway, things that I can add on to a figure with a button click, either as decorations like, right now I've got oval shaped gems in that one insert mesh brush. You can add diamond shaped gems and perfectly round gems and things like that. And then things like uh, additional things for the belt like uh, empty scabbards that could be useful um moving the backpacks and that to you know the insert mesh brush but those are you know emergency the intent is that they'd be preferred that they be added on before i export so the scaling will be right i could also make slight variants in the backpack to represent things like Explorer's Pack, Dungeoneer's Pack, um, Woodsman's Pack, Entertainer's Pack, things like that. So I'm up to three people and nobody's talking. Is one of you tonight scheduled a uh, uh, scheduled sculpt? Or am I just talking to people who are just kind of lurking? I'm not, not really paying attention. Now, like I said, once the patron gets here, I'll be sculpting their figure. Until he does, it's just random jibber-jabber. Yeah. It's random... Jibber jabber. Hey, it's that jibber jabber. So yeah. So now my throat's getting sore. Some of you may not have seen, but I finished the uh, There we go. I finished the uh, water warlock sculpt from the other night. And so we're going to add a media file. And we're going to show off the water warlock. That is supposed to be seaweed dangling on the uh, staff simply because to make it look like real seaweed, it ended up looking almost like feathers or be utterly flat. One of the two. But yeah, there she is in her nice uh, flowy dress and long flowy hair and sea bait and a sploosh of water in her hand. And yeah, she was a water ganasi, so that's why she's got the thin ear. And yeah, so she got done. I also got the uh, uh, Warforged Monk paint it only the large form not the small form but it, it's not in here right now so i can't actually just grab it and go look i did it look i did it look i did it yes it did it yes it did it did it did it did it woo anyway go ahead and poke my head into uh oops i know i forgot something
Anyway, I get the feeling that some people may not have shown up in here simply because I made a comment earlier today about problems with the internet. Well, they apparently are kind of kind of fixed. Okay. Bow, bow. Hey, Mark. Yeah. You weren't here, so basically what's going to happen is I'm waiting on the patron. If the patron doesn't show up, I'll be making additional doodads. That is a technical term. It is very specific and explicit. It is a doodad. To be fair, there's an alternate meaning of doodad. If you are a low IQ dwarf, a doodad is a druid. <clears throat> Ivan and Pykel Boulder Shoulder. If you know those names, name the series of book it's from. I will say it's D&D books. But Ivan and Pykel Boulder Shoulder actually show up in the Nice little cartoon picture at the back of uh, uh, Dragon Heist Waterdeep. Ivan and Pykel Boulder Shoulder, the Boulder Shoulder brothers, are a pair of dwarven fighters. And <laughs> Pykel insists he's not a fighter, he's a doodad. And he wears flowers in his hair and tries to poke living things to make them grow. And this was written back in 2nd edition, when dwarves could not be druids. They could not be wizards. There, there are a lot of racial restrictions on classes. So, Ivan's, or Pykel swore he was a doodad. And then at the end of the book, he... His brother comes running for Brother Catterly, who's like, you know, he's this utter fear. Brother Catterly, Brother Catterly, you've got to see this. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. Runs back, and they see Pykel surrounded by various clay pots. Pykel holds one up and goes, Do that! And a little plant starts growing out of it. Gotta love that name. I Pykel Boulder Shoulder. The series was called the Cleric Quintet. And it was very definitely, very clearly written in a second edition world with a lot of second edition rules ex almost explicit in the writing of the book. But at least it wasn't as bad as the Planescape book series. Planescape game? Amazing. Masterpiece. Amazing story. Great gameplay for the time. And it was it had this nice, cool mood. Um, I don't know. I know I have one scheduled for tonight, but I don't remember with who. And I can't find the series of messages about it. And they never told me what they wanted. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Planescape game, awesome. Planescape book, horrible. About a series, about a brother and a sister who end up in the plains from a mundane world, trying to find their uncle or something. And at the end, she gets kidnapped in this typical damsel in distress and I've already done a doodad anyway typical damsel in distress while the brother and uncle are running to rescue her and as they're going they are using daggers to one shot greater demons like whoever whoever wrote the book had never played D&D &D in their life and doesn't understand that a mundane dagger, no matter how many, how many hooks and curves and spikes it has, 
If it's not magical, it's going to just skitter off a glabrezu and of rock. It was bad. Anyway, so here's hoping that my patron gets here soon so I can uh, go ahead and make his sculpt. Like I said, in about another five minutes, if he's not here, we're going to start making things to add on to things and stuff with the what's and the, the, and the what's call it. In other words, doodads and thingamajigs, but not dingle hoppers because we don't need a fork. Anyway. So, it's 8.14, 8.20. If he hasn't shown up, we'll switch to making additional details and things like that. Anyway, I mentioned before at the beginning of the show... Forgotten Empire's project is not doing well. As in, I have built and deleted the High Temple of Sumeria like five times already. Because it looks like crap. So I might shelve that for a while and switch to something else. And I was thinking... What about a winter slash arctic slash mountain peak theme? Snowy wastes, ice monsters, polar bears, vicious, evil, nasty, uh, cannibalistic, flesh-eating penguins. Things like that, you yeah. know. In other news, the women's soccer team, or football, if you prefer, association football, just won their fourth uh, World Cup and successfully defended the title. And while they were trying to do a live interview with the coach and some of the players, the entire crowd, both American and the other, started chanting F Trump. All of them started chanting F Trump. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Anyway, so why aren't our uh, women why isn't our women's soccer team being given the same amount of money as the men's soccer team even though, you know, they win? I mean, our women's soccer team is proven the best in the world twice running. And yet, they fly on, they fly coach on commercial airlines. They stay in flea bag motels. And in general, aren't given any kind of support. That's, that's, it's a travesty is what it is. If you're going to treat the men who lose the first class flights and nice hotels, then why are we treating the women who win like they are? I mean, it's, it's pathetic. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it is eight. 18, we've got two minutes left for the patron to show up. And I'm going to finish this last string cheese. When I finish this last string cheese, we will start making doodads. Doodad!
just to give you a clue on some of the things that will be coming up on the weekdays, since I'm doing the characters for a Saturday game. We have uh, two GIF. Well, one of them is, is not really part of the group, but we have at least one GIF. A GIF fighter who thinks he's in charge of everyone. Uh, we have a Dragonborn. I don't remember what she is. We have a Halfling Cleric. Yes, a Halfling Cleric. And that Halfling Cleric appears to be the only character under six feet tall. Even our elves, like, rolled maxed out height. Um, wait, no. Nowhere is 5'7". Nowhere is a... Fey tiefling. She has antlers instead of horns, like like elk antlers instead of horns, and her feet are hooved, and she's got vines in her hair. But pretty much the entire party is tall. Oh, and on top of that, the the water ganasi. I don't know if you noticed. She's got high heels, high heeled boots with laces up the back. Mm hmm So anyway. Um, there's not going to be any crazy characters, I don't think. Not like the uh, Pastafarian warlock. Or the cleric who part-times as the medic at a local brothel casting lesser and greater restoration to get rid of venereal diseases. Mm-hmm. Or the, uh, the dwarf who thought he was a barbarian but was actually a cleric. And, but he was, uh, all because uh, Clan Giddon Silverbeard, the uh, Dwarven God of War, thought he was hilarious. And that, that, my patron is not showing up. So, 3D Studio Max. Now, the thing about Insert Mesh. The actual size of the mesh doesn't matter. Not in the slightest. So what we're going to do... <clears throat> we're going to go ahead... I've already made a couple of these uh, doodads. I'm going to make another one. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to make... A, we're going to take a box. We're going to make it there. And we're going to make sure that it's going up to the back. Excuse me. And then we're going to make this... Make sure the length and the width are the same. 40 and 40. And we're going to convert it to edible mesh. Or edible poly. Then, we're going to rotate it 45 degrees. And, we're going to make it, there we go, diamond shaped, no, no, no pun intended. We're going to select this one front piece. We're going to, actually one thing I need to do real quick, I need to change the positioning to uh, X0 and Z0. And now, okay, there we go. Now we're going to extrude out a little. Uh, let's make it a little bit more. Make it 20. Okay, and then we're going to click this button, mark collapse. Gee, I wonder what it's going to do. Bing! And what we have... Okay, it's way too sticky-outy. 
Let's uh, bring this in there. A diamond-shaped gemstone to be put on as decoration. Now, one other problem is we need to make sure that it's got a setting. So we click on this and we hit loop. Burr, and then we create create shape. We click create shape from selection. Boop. Okay. Uh oh, that didn't work. So let's try it again. Create shape from selection. Linear. Okay. There we go. Now we select that. Rendering, enable in viewport. And oh look, we're starting to get a little pipe around there, but we need a lot bigger because this is going to be really, really small. So we're going to increase thickness. About there. And let's increase the size to 16. Um, let's make it 20. And we're going to edible poly. No, we're not. I just remembered we need to drop this down to about six. Okay. Edible poly. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to drag it back to about there. And then we're going to make it bigger until there. Finally, we're going to select all of these. And then we're going to click Connect. There it is. There it is. I have to relearn positioning for all of these because with this much larger monitor, we're a lot closer to... Drop that to there. Okay. Now, this, we're going to select all of these vertexes. We're going to sham, or edges, we're going to sham for them 0 0.01, 2, 3. And then mesh smooth 1, 2. Flaps all. And then finally, we're going to take this, this, this little guy here. Oh, wrong button. There we go. And we're going to grab right behind the largest loop. And bring it back to there. So that way, there's a gap around it. And this is our little diamond-shaped do that. Go ahead and mesh smooth it once. Flaps all. And now attach that. And let's make it nice and bright red. Because it's a Ruby. File. Export selected. Meshes. Free sculpt. Uh, new IMB, Wavefront OBJ, and Tall Diamond Gem. Export. Bing. Done. Anyway. So now, we're going to go ahead and pop over here. ZBrush. And this is going to be very, very, very simple. We're going to import meshes, pre sculpt minis, the new IMB. We're going to start with the diamond gem. And we're going to pull it there. And we are going to uh, go to edit. And we're going to make sure we have the insert gemstone brush selected. We're then going to create insert mesh brush. 
append. And now it's there. We're now going to import the round gem. And bang. Create insert mesh brush, append. And then we're going to import the tall diamond, which we're going to have to zoom out. And create insert mesh brush, append. Now just to check, these are all set at a pretty high depth, but yeah, these will be planted when we draw them onto the figures. So, before we do anything else, just to make sure we don't lose these, save as. Now I gotta be careful here. This is in my C drive, program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 2019, Z data, brush presets, and this one is, is insert gemstone, insert gemstone one. Save. Yes, I want to replace it. Now whenever I load up that brush, these will be on that brush. And just to show you what it can do. Put those gems on there. Change the... Let's go ahead and... D, 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 D. Go back to depth. Let's change that depth to zero. And that's... Burp, burp, beep. We can now bedazzle everything. Although we got to be careful, as you can see, the back corner here. Anyway. So. We now have the oval gems that we've been using before. Uh, the disc-shaped buckle. And then a diamond gem, a round gem, and a tall diamond gem. Which, you know, it's a, just, you know, instead of being where... You know, you see what I'm talking about. Bing. That's also, that's a situation where we then need to go ahead and go to scale. And let's, uh. Pull it up to there. Yeah. But you see, it's all nice and pretty. We can also use that to make spikes. By. Well, that's. Digging it deeper a little bit, and then there we go. We have our spikes. Okay, and it's it's all quiet again. Meanwhile, let's go back to uh, draw, and we're going to. in here and geometry delete hidden okay now one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead we now need to make a scabbard brain went we're only gonna make a single scabbard because what we can do is we can use that rotate use the scale to stretch it out to make it for a long sword or shrink it to make it a dagger but it's going to be an empty scabbard. So, bye-bye. And just to uh, make sure we're getting at least the basic proportions right, I'm going to import a basic arming sword. That's going to be our basic proportions. Then we're going to rotate this 45 degrees. Yeah, there. Here. Now, well, yeah, it's gray. That's kind of hard to see. We're going to make it uh, that color. Yeah. It's still hard to see, but it can be seen. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a box. A little bit thicker and a little bit longer than the blade. And real quick, we're going to, this is at 13.228. 13.228 Okay, now we're going to move it to here. We need to increase the height quite a bit, about there. We also need to make sure that the uh, width is there. Edible Poly. We're then going to click on these. Come down to there. We want to make sure it does end up thicker than the blade. So that it could feasibly fit in there. Next thing is cutting here, and we're going to connect. Then drag that down to about there. Here. And narrow this a little bit. Pull back. And these right here, we're also going to narrow, like that. But then, we're going to grab here, we're going to pull it up to here. Oh, actually, no, let's do that after we get the other straps on. We need three more lines on here. Two, three. Okay. The first one is going to be up near the top. Okay, the second one is going to be kind of middle. And actually what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add one more down here. And... There we go. Now... What we're going to do from here is we're going to select. Actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead and grab these two and these two. We're going to pull them up that far because what's going to happen is they're going to end up curving when we smooth it. So we're going to go ahead and select here and grow. Then we're going to select here and deselect there and then select here we are now going to extrude out local normal we're going to shrink that down to about there okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to taper And we look around in here, and from the side it looks good. Yeah. And we collapse it. Now. Oh, one other thing we need to do while I'm thinking about it. Grab these spaces. We're going to extrude. Ah. By group, and we're going to shrink in just a bit. Next is we're going to select the edges we want to sharpen. Then we hit loop. Okay, let me go ahead and make this 
edge spaces, you can see we forgot to grab these guys. So we hit loop again. Loop. And we're going to chamfer 0 0.001. Okay. And we're going to select here and here. We're going to connect twice. What we're doing is we're creating some edges that will kind of bolster the sharpness of where these extruded parts are. And then finally, I'm going to select these edges right here and click ring. These are all of the ones on the horizontal plane. I'm going to click connect one. The reason for this is to give us a, a, a better smooth effect. Now, first thing we do is we hit smooth because we just wanted to see, yeah, see the effect of the mesh smooth. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make it a little bit thicker just so that it's, and bam. We have the scabbard for a typical arming sword. Collapse all. We're going to select the sword and delete it. And then we're going to rotate this 90. We're going to effect pivot and center to object. And then we're going to move this to world center. Because otherwise, when we load in, after having loaded in the other things, It'd be weird. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, let's go ahead and we're going to drag it down a little so that the world center is actually there. Now, this is our scabbard. There are many like it, but this one is ours. Now, we are going to go ahead, select it, file, export selected, scabbard, export, done. Still nothing said. And now we're going to import, go back to that, uh, the Storage 03109, da, 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 meshes, free sculpt minis, Xenu scabbard. Now, the reason it suddenly shrank is because that last one was printed, or rather, was done at a very small state. We're going to go ahead and make that a little bit higher res. It's 55,000 triangles now. And then we're going to create insert mesh, append. And we, we can then use the move tools and that to move it into place. And you'll notice we can slide it along that angle. No matter where I put the mouse, it's only going around that, that line. And so now he's got a scabbard hanging. We can also kind of rotate it to fit if his hips are a little bit twi uh, angled. And yeah, in general, there we go with that. And I'm back down to three people. Yay, we're about to see a whole shiboom. Anyway, oh, it is quarter till nine. We're probably not going to go for the full two hours. Now, one thing we are going to do, we're going to come in here, content library, props. I'm going to pull out. Wait a minute. 
Did I? Yes, I did. I need to be at insert belt stuff. Yeah, and that's where I put the, the two backpacks, by the way, as well as a belt dagger and a hip horn. So I need to now. Let's leave it embed zero. And burn. Insert mesh, append. So, you, so right now for your belt, we have a pouch, potion, bag, belt dagger, hip horn, hip quiver, and scabbard. And then on your back, we have a light and a heavy backpack. The difference being the heavy backpack has pouches on it and a bedroll. I mean, here's your heavy backpack. And here's your light backpack. We Anyway. So in order to, we need to save this one. That means going back up here, program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 2019, Z data, brush presets, insert belt stuff. Yes. And now I'm going to pop back here because I have to close down ZBrush and restart it so that I don't have the, the uh, scabbard on the doodads and instead have it with the belt stuff. Mm -hmm. See, the advantage of having a base mesh is it's work you do at point A that you don't have to do at point C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, etc. It's like creating a library for a uh, uh, programming language, whatever one that uses libraries and stuff. Yeah, I haven't coded since 1987. I don't know object-oriented programming. Yep. Anyway, now restart ZBrush. So we have a lot of stuff that I've added as things that I can add on after the fact that don't need to be props. There are some things that will always need to be props because they will always be in a different position depending on the character's pose, size, etc., etc., or that always need to be a certain scaling. And that would be like, you know, the, uh, Um, as my brain goes, go ahead and draw on a cylinder just so I can show you things. And let's go ahead and go back to here. All right. And I need to restart the document. Document. New document. No, I do not want to save changes. Here. Edit. There we go. And now under geometry, I'm going to simply subdivide it a couple of times. Well, first, make polymesh 3D. Now, subdivide it a few times lower and we go to the uh, insert gemstone and yay what we have is we have a gemstone gemstone without uh, gemstone without a uh, setting skull Decorative skull, that is. Buckle. With the uh, tail of the belt. Uh, disc. These are useful for things like, you know, on the on the part of a pauldron right down here, or for, like I did in the hair of and the belt buckle of the water mage, turning them into various other minor decorative shapes. Anyway, and now we have a knot, a big old rope knot, a uh, another kind of skull. It's a bit more like a goblin skull or something, an actual skull compared to this thing. We have. 
the tube for my uh, flesh golem. The tubes in this back, and then square diamond, a square gem, round gem, and extended diamond gem. These are all the things, let me go ahead and, these are all the things that are in this particular subtool, or particular brush. Let me go ahead and, bum, 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 bum. Now when we go to insert hip stuff, or insert belt stuff, we're gonna start with the pouch. Pouch. Potion. Bag. Backpack heavy. Backpack light. A belt dagger. A horn for the hip. The quiver on the hip. And your scabbard. Once again, these are all things that are in that one brush. And we you can individually then manipulate and tweak them and position them a little bit better than you did originally. But either way, it takes a lot of time out of making some things that you make over and over and over again. And you just saw me, I just completely restarted ZBrush and these are there. You know I restarted, because when we go to the insert uh, gemstone, I don't have the scabbard over here. Because, you know, and then if you hit M, you get the full array of things. Sometimes, if you get a large enough one, these things will go all the way off the screen. And so you need to pretty much move your mouse down and hit M. And then you can see the individual ones, and you can even sort them by the name, like B. The only one with a B is the buckle. Burp. G has two. A. Oh, the only thing with a K is a knot. And that's not too big, is it? And then we're going to... Walk back to the screen. And uh, basically, I'm going to sit here and document new before we do anything else. Now, uh, from what you've just seen, can you think of anything else that might be something common that, you know, I could just insert like that? onto a belt, onto the back, anything else like that. Any other ideas? Like I said, I'm tempted to make variant packs. You know, because sometimes you want something different. Sometimes you want to have your rope visible and, you know, it's clearly a mountaineer's pack. Yes, I'm eating string cheese wrong. It's because it looks goofy. Gemstones, pouches, backpack, uh, knots, buckles. The problem with runes is runes are almost always inset. They're carved in. They're not extruded out. This has to be something that is purely, you know, added on, not pushed into. With the, uh, the various packs, it's going to have to wait until I get my my pack from out in the car where my 
player's handbook is. Anyway. I could do some things for sci-fi. Like, all of those are fantasy. Purely fantasy. But, I could do various things on the belt. The kiddies are asleep. They spent the first 15 minutes in here going, Hi! <laughs> and now they're asleep right over there. You can't see them, but they're over there sound asleep. I am not Sans Kitty. I am Kitty Adjacent. Uh oh, and one of them apparently heard that because. Did you hear Mark complaining about no kitties? Did you hear Mark complaining about no kitties? Ah, oh, you insane fuzz bucket. What? Yeah. Oh. What are you doing, Fuzz Bucket? Hmm? Alright, that's a happy kitty. <laughs> Alright, Fuzz Butt, I'm putting you back on the ground, okay? You going on the ground. That does not mean try to go to sleep in my arms. <laughs> okay, little buddy, come on. I'm putting you back on the ground. There you go. Michael, what you missed today uh, so far, there is no patron sculpt. It, he didn't show up. Uh, what I did instead was, I don't know if you've ever seen me use the ZBrush Insert Mesh Tool to just add on gemstones, skulls, the knots for when there's a rope, things like that onto a figure. I made additional things to use on those insert meshes. Go ahead and stop the hiccups and pull back into here. And we are going to go here, draw in a cylinder just to show y'all once again. Nice 3D, bad dude. Oh, heck. Document, new document. There we go. Now, Things that I've added today, I added a. Oh, I added a new kind of gemstone, which we can you know tweak the scaling on. Another kind of new gemstone. This is more of a round one, and. One that's more of a elongated diamond. Now the reason we don't just take this one and use the scale and stretch it is because, well, let's watch what happens. And now scale, and we're going here. The end result is well, it's hard to tell, but let me go ahead and switch back to draw. 
the proportions around the seam become less circle and more conical. It's if you cross section the uh, setting, it'd be less spherical. You can see a nicely spherical here. Here it's more angular. It's anyway. I also added things for the belt. You know, we had the pouches, potion, and the bag. Now there's the the backpacks in there, along with a small pack, a belt dagger, a horn to put on your hip, a quiver, and a scabbard. And as I said, you can take the scabbard, and if we want to make this a longsword scabbard, we can re we make it a dagger. We can just kind of shrink it this way and this way a little. We want to try and keep the thickness, because without the thickness, it does tend to be a bit. I mean, there, an empty large dagger. But you see what I mean? You can change the adjustments and scale it with that. Um, hit M and you can see everything that's included. Anyway. That's what we did so far today. Anyway. It's uh, 9 o'clock. I've been online for one hour. I've added several pieces to the insert, uh, insert gemstone and a couple pieces to, the, or a piece really to the insert uh, belt stuff, which really should be insert belt stuff and insert back stuff, but you only know, got room for one. You know, don't want to make the name of the thing way too long so you can't identify it. Now, as I said before, the Forgotten Empires project is currently on hold, indefinite hold because it, it just did not look good. It did not look like something I wanted my name attached to. So I put it on hold and I'm starting work on another project, um, very possibly a winter project. I don't mean taking, I don't mean, you know, having it ready by winter. I mean representing winter or the Arctic or, you know, the mountaintops. That'll give me a little bit more naturalistic, organic things to sculpt. Because rocks... Rocks are inorganic, but have an organic shape. Anyway. As it is... 902. I've already shown how... To add something to an insert mesh brush. How I made the, the gemstones in that. And even how to modify them, for example, taking that square insert gemstone and scaling it to turn it into a spike. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call it an early evening. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll be putting the uh, um, Arcane Archer from last week up on the patron file vault. And making a mention of it in the Patreon announcements. So I'm going to do my usual and stick my hand up here so that I can see it. I'm going to count from 5 to 1. When I get to 1, I'm going to say something goofy. And then go... <laughs> and when I see the... <laughs> then I know it's time for me to go ahead and click and dis dis leave the broadcast. Because it means that uh, I've caught up to the lag. So, it's going to be five, a four, a three, two, and a one. Right.
Friday was a bad day. Yeah. You don't know why. Eh, 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 eh.